Okay, so I need to talk about Critical Role Campaign 3 real quick and understand that this is being recorded before Campaign 3 airs, so there's probably going to be some stuff I don't quite know or understand. I can't predict the future, even if I might try. And that being said, I'm going to try to predict the future here. So, uh, <laughs> let's go. Basically, the reason I'm making this video is I kind of want to speculate and kind of want to temper people's expectations and prepare, hopefully, the critter community for what may be coming ahead because I've got a feeling I know a little bit of what's happening based off of some previous experience. So, let's talk about Critical Role Campaign 3, how we can manage our expectations, and how we can move forward in making sure that we continue to support those nerdy ass voice actors. So, let's talk about that. Alright, so why do I want to talk about this, especially since I just made a video about Critical Role last week? Well, here's the simple fact of the matter. People are excited for Campaign 3. Let me be clear, so am I. I'm so hyped, I've missed those nerdy ass voice actors so much and I cannot wait to dive right into it. I'm actually a little upset because I kind of have to wait to watch the first episode. See, the reason for that is that I'm waiting for my friends so we could do a watch party, but we have to do it later in the week. So please try and keep spoilers down in the comments to a minimum. I read all your comments and I don't want to have to censor myself or not look at all of them. But they recently released their state of the role video and I noticed some things that they said that made a lot of sense to me, but a lot of the community didn't quite seem to understand. And I just kind of want to get some information out there. Everything I say in this video could be inaccurate, and if that's the case, alright, cool, no problems, but I just want to put it out there in case these things do happen, so people have an understanding before they might get upset. The first part of that that I want to talk about is this. I don't live with you, is there anything you could share with me and the, and the critters? <laughs> I, I, I will say, throughout any expectations, out the window, uh, if you're a longtime critter or you're finally joining us for the first adventure, either way, it will be a new and unique experience for everyone. Yeah, we got a lot of fun surprises planned, and ultimately, we're just excited to explore new ways to tell our story, along with some new storytellers. So don't be alarmed if and when we mix things up. This campaign is going to be a, uh, a bit of a wild ride, and the eight of us are very excited for what's in store. Notice how Matt said throw out any expectations, and I understand why he's doing that he's saying don't get excited for anything that you don't expect it's not going to be like you know the best thing in the world it's still a bunch of nerds playing DD. don't expect an amazingly curated experience at least that's kind of what he's getting at but that very statement of throw out expectations also makes something very clear and i know that a lot of people picked up on this they're going to be making some changes differences things that they want to improve and expand upon and they want to change how they work not only are they a business now and a very successful one, already talked about that, link in the description if you want to watch that video, but they're also just wanting to change how they play D&D. The fact of the matter is, when you play a D&D campaign for a long time, it's awesome, it's fun, but you get to the next one, you're always thinking about what you could do differently to make things more exciting, and I expect that too. But that's not specifically what I'm wanting to talk about here. As I just mentioned, Critical Role is a business. A business needs to be able to expand. Don't get me wrong, they will always be a table of nerdy ass voice actors playing D&D. That's not going to change. They're always going to want to play D&D and always going to want to share stories in some capacity. It's what they love and I don't think they hide that in any small way. However, the fact that they are a small table does cause some problems. And why do I say that? Well, businesses need to expand. They need to scale. There's a concept in business called a scalable function, and that may not be the official term for it, it's what I learned, but basically it means when you create a process, you have to build it with the intention of being able to scale to a larger platform. If you want to make a store where you sell some things, you have to have processes in place that will be able to scale if your store starts to expand because you want to sell more of those things. If I plan on running a multi-million dollar company, I cannot expect myself, my one little person, to sell all those products. I have to have a process in place that will be able to be picked up by others and expanded because I'll need the help. Now what does this have to do with Critical Role? They can't keep doing this forever. And that's kind of sad to say, it's difficult, I don't like to acknowledge it, but I think it's important to do so. Travis and Laura have a kid, and Liam and Sam have families. Talison, well, he's got Eldritch Deity stuff to do, and Matt and Marisha have this whole company to run. Ashley's got the Critical Role Foundation as well as her acting career. And they're also, you know, aging, like humans do. Save for Talison, but he's got his own thing going on. The point is, they want this to be able to be something that you guys, the critters, can continue to experience and love. 
they don't want the entertainment, the inspiration, the amazing charity drives to end. They want to continue to give that because you guys are why they do it. They love that. But they can't continue to do it themselves. Look, think about it this way. They put hours into just the specific Critical Role game. Not to mention just the time block that they put aside for them to play. There's also the editing, the producing, the cast, there's the set. There is so much that goes into that outside of just filming the actual game. If they want to continue to scale and improve, they cannot just keep this to themselves. There has to be expansion. And so in order to do that, there have to be new people added. And do I mean that they're going to replace people at the Critical Role table? I legitimately do not think that's going to happen. That would sacrifice the integrity of their game. They love this game that they've created for this group. And there have been people out there complaining about the fact that there's not any diversity in their group, which is just misunderstood on so many levels. The reason this became popular and people love it is because it is a group of close-knit friends having fun. You can't just shove diversity into that. It's not how it works. Yes, of course there's a lack of diversity in their friend group because they all grew up in a time where diversity was not, you know, something that was really pushed forward. So of course they're all going to be white people in this friend group. It's what they grew up with. Does that mean that they push back against diversity? Hell no. Look at literally anything they've produced. But it does mean there's a serious misunderstanding of they should just shove diversity into their cast. Now, I'm not making this video to address that topic specifically, but I think it's related, at least in some part. Because if I'm sitting here saying they can't add anybody else in for diversity's sake, I'm also saying that they can't add people in for scalability's sake. So what am I saying? I'm saying that I think they're going to be expanding Critical Role as it is. Critical Role is a show. And yes, they have this game in Exandria, which is awesome, but they also did Exandria Unlimited, which I think was a pretty telling sign. They're going to be expanding what Critical Role is. It's not just going to be them at the table anymore. I'm pretty certain there's going to be new campaigns, new groups, new people, new DMs, new everything. And at the core of it all, of course, is the Critical Role cast, but they can't do this forever. And so I really expect them to begin testing out new things this campaign. I don't know what. I could make some predictions. I legitimately think it's a pretty good bet that they might have a guest DM for a few sessions this campaign, and definitely some more guest players. And I think they may even go off into different tangents and play different characters for different arcs at some point, basically focusing on different groups. Am I positive in this? No, but it all seems kind of likely. Because if you're looking at your business, your entertainment business, and you want to expand, you want to add that diversity, because I truly believe they do, you have to find ways of adding people into the game, adding different scenarios, adding different groups without compromising the integrity of the original group. So what am I trying to say? It kind of sounds like I'm just going in circles. Is Critical Role trying to sell out, or are they trying to maintain the integrity of their business? Are they trying to remain a tight-knit friend group, or are they trying to expand? That's kind of what I'm trying to get at. It's sort of a catch-22, isn't it? You don't really know which they're able to do or what they're trying to accomplish. And so they're trying to find a middle ground. They want to keep their friend group. It's what they were built on. I could go through countless different interviews where they talk about the fact that the one thing they refuse to do is remove the integrity of their game. They started as a group of friends playing D&D. That was it. It expanded into something more, but that's what they wanted to keep things as. So now as they're trying to figure out how to expand their business for you guys to be able to keep it going when someday they may not be able to, they have to look to the future. And the future may not hold all of them. So what I really think they're trying to do is keep what everybody loves. Keep what they love. Their friend group. And I really expect in Campaign 3 for them to try and experiment just a little bit more. Ultimately, they're going to try and bring new people in. Marisha said as much, but I don't think they're going to try and do so with the intention of just replacing what they're doing, but instead giving new opportunities. New opportunities for more people to come in. Different faces. Different people from different backgrounds to enjoy while still not compromising what Critical Role does. That could come in a totally large variety of manners. New shows, maybe those people join in on Critical Role, maybe Critical Role focuses on two different parties. I really don't know. I'm not in their business. But I do know that they have to do this to survive to the future. If they want to keep bringing the content that they are for free and they want to expand and be able to be giving the money that they're making to these other charities and organizations, they have to make a difference. And so, they're trying to find a middle ground, and that's what I'm trying to explain. Changes are going to come, and people do not like changes. So hopefully I can help shine a little bit of light on why the changes have to come, and what the changes might mean, so it's not so scary for everybody.
Anyways, maybe Campaign 3 is a little bit more of an anthology series, though that seems really far out there. I don't honestly think they're going to do that, but anything is possible because they have to be looking for a way to be able to expand, to be able to continue to grow and give you guys the entertainment that they've become so good at giving without exhausting the core cast. It's also so that they can add diversity and give more people a chance to be able to step into the limelight. It's a ton of different things. But the reason I've made this video and I want to get this out there is so that people are not shocked or surprised or feel blindsided by the changes Critical Role may be making in order to be able to expand their company to continue to make the awesome changes they want to. The fact of the matter is, they're not expanding just because they're greedy. And again, I made a video on this. I'm not going to retout it. But they're expanding because they want to give more entertainment. They want to have more money to make more changes in the world that better it. So yeah, just consider this a PSA. I honestly don't think anything I've said in this video will necessarily actually come to fruition. I'm not an amazing business mogul. I'm not going to be able to predict the future. None of that. But I do know that changes are coming. They've stated it many times in their different communications, and I just want that to be clear so that we can all be ready and prepared to support them instead of giving them backlash. Nothing is worse than people lashing out based on misunderstanding rather than actual facts. So let's just be prepared, understand what they're doing, and support them in their entire journey. They've been amazing and have continued to give us so much free content. Let's not take that for granted. Go out into the world, make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play your role. Thank you. Come again.